controversy is heating up again. You remember cold fusion, don't you? Two Utah scientists pluck a test tube in water, and the next thing you know, the world is talking about an unlimited supply of safe, pollution-free energy. But within months, the Utah miracle was labeled a mistake. But as John Hashimoto reports, cold fusion is making a comeback. Established a sustained nuclear fusion reaction by means, uh, by means which are considerably simpler uh, than conventional techniques. To scientists, this March 23rd, 1989 news conference is the stuff dreams are made of. A discovery that at the time looked like the greatest breakthrough since the invention of the wheel. Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischmann claimed they had harnessed nuclear fusion, the same awesome force that powers the sun, in a test tube of water at room temperature. This experiment has to be approached with some caution. Despite their cautionary warnings that day, the implications of Pons and Fleischmann's stunning announcement were obvious. They claimed that by passing a current through heavy water between palladium electrodes, a huge amount of heat was created. The crucial element in all this was their water, which contained a form of hydrogen called deuteriums. Because seawater contains a limitless supply of deuteriums, cold nuclear fusion holds the elusive promise of cheap, virtually limitless, safe energy. It appeared to be a dream come true. Without these exact facts, we will never be certain that our samples have reproduced their samples. I beg your pardon, the background is available in the corrections to the paper. That might be. But within months, the Utah experiment became a scientific nightmare. Pons and Fleischmann released only limited details of their experiment, and some data was found to be flawed. Worse, the results could not be reproduced. Almost overnight, cold fusion became a discovery that never was. In a paper released today, the MIT scientists concluded that a major part of the Utah claim is wrong. Enter Eugene Malov, lecturer and science journalist at MIT. Malov is about to release a new book called Fire from Ice, which questions the conventional wisdom about cold fusion and the two chemists who put it on the map. I would say that Pons and Fleischmann will go down in the history of science as heroes, albeit imperfect ones. Malov says reports about the death of cold fusion have been greatly exaggerated, not only as work on cold fusion continuing around the world, but other scientists are claiming they too are finding their own positive results. There are over a hundred laboratories around the world where positive results have been achieved. Five of them happen to be U.S. federal laboratories. There happen to be at least ten countries in which positive results have occurred. In Japan and in the Soviet Union, major efforts are underway. In China even, the mainland China, uh, results are coming in and they're taking it seriously. It is not something that, can, that is uh, of the nature of a joke, in my opinion. The public isn't aware of cold fusion's continuing promise, Malov says, because most of the powers that be in the scientific community have decided it's not worthy of attention. One of the most strident non-believers, he claims, is John Maddox, editor of the scientific journal Nature. Maddox had this to say about cold fusion in an interview conducted two years ago. I think that, uh, broadly speaking, it's dead, and it'll remain dead for a long, long time. What you're talking about is a closed-mindedness that's not supposed to be associated with the scientific community at large. This has been a great shock to me. You know, I put science on a pedestal. I've been with science all my life, a passionate devotee of science with capital letters. But what I didn't realize, and it took the cold fusion uh, controversy to make me painfully and deeply aware of this, was that scientists could be as human and fallible in the, in the grossest of ways as any other human beings, including politicians. Malov's claim about scientific bias puts him in direct odds with the majority of physicists at MIT, where hot fusion, not cold fusion, is the subject of intense study and funding. One is physicist Richard Petrasso, who led the MIT team that early on revealed flaws in the Utah experiment. There are, I think you could say, maybe 20, 30 groups throughout the world that claim they have positive results. Um, but they tend to be what I would call advocates for cold fusion. Um, I cannot think of any critical group that has been able to reproduce the results. Petrasso says there is no conspiracy to keep positive cold fusion results under wraps. The issue, he says, is not bias, but quality science. As I was a referee for two cold fusion papers, one of which was from Nature, 
and I read through it and felt it was a very bad paper scientifically and as a referee I had the obligation to reject it for those reasons just like I reject other papers and I'm not going to give cold fusion or any other scientific theory some preference because then you're asking me to abandon my uh, scientific values. One experiment could be wrong. In the beginning, Pons and Fleischmann could have been wrong. But that all these other people are wrong, I don't believe it for a minute. Malov's views will by no means go unopposed at local bookstores. A new book which dismisses cold fusion as a fluke has just been released. Its author, physicist Frank Close, talked to us from Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico today. What chance for test tube fusion uh, with regards to solving the world's energy supply is absolutely zero. Um, with regards to there being a significant nuclear phenomenon in there, absolutely zero. With the possibility of making a new form of storage battery, possible. The books by Frank Close and Eugene Malov will go on sale locally within the next few weeks, but it's unlikely either will change many minds in a scientific community where the line over this controversy has already been drawn. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm John Hashimoto.